And when you're ready to connect in, our intention is to access the knowledge of Antarctica and get the highest information that we can receive today to help our viewers understand, to give us higher perspective and to create a learning moment for evolution. Okay, so where they dropped me, it's like I'm in this like really tropical, beautiful rainforest. Um, and it's like I'm looking up at this like huge, gigantic pyramid and the pyramid is blue. Is and it what is the pyramid made out of? It's like blue quartz. Ooh, ooh. So are they wanting you to go into the pyramid? I don't know, but I want to go in the pyramid. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Yeah, so it has, like, really intense energy, and then it's also, like, well, if, well, I started, like, spinning. It feels like there's, like, just this vortex of energy. What do you think that they did in the pyramid? Like, what is it used for? Okay, so I just heard, like, to go home. <laughs> mm. So this is definitely, like, some kind of portal in this pyramid. Um, and I feel a lot of, like, I feel gray aliens, but they're, like, tall gray aliens. And are they, like, running the pyramid? Or are they traveling through it? What are they doing? It's, like this vortex of energy swirls within this pyramid and then they can use it as a direct portal back to they're telling me like the zeta grays or like to the zeta is it a zeta nebula um or just like where the zeta are from like they're, it's very connected to the zetas and then it's also connected to It looks like a cartoon. It's like I can see it. It's like one alien jumps in. <laughs> <Where it's> like, <laughs> it's like they jump in. Oh my gosh, you know, you know exactly what it looks like. Did you ever play um Mario on Nintendo 64 where like you could jump into it's like they had paintings on the ground and you could jump in to go into different worlds? No, but I can kind of visualize it with you telling me. Yeah, it's like this vortex created, it's like, um, like you would jump through it and go into like different worlds or like to different places. So it's like, there's actual portals to go to uh, use for travel. And they're saying that like, okay, so where they took me was like, so Antarctica is so important because it was the very first civilization ever on Earth. So there have been multiple civilizations that have rose and fallen on Earth. But Antarctica um, was a lot warmer and it was very tropical then. And it was like the first civilization. It's like the first golden age of Earth. And so the most ancient wisdom is in Antarctica. And it's like, that's why all of these things are starting to defrost is because like the most ancient knowledge of earth is starting to be uncovered for us. So we've had like, we have access now. It's like ancient Egyptian knowledge, um, ancient Mayan knowledge but they're telling me that, like, you're not even going to believe, like, the ancient Antarctic uh, knowledge. <laughs> what did they, when they first came to Antarctica, what we know is now, like, what did they want to learn and experience um, from that uh, lifetime? Oh, so it's like, I'm seeing all these different kind of beings. So it's not even that it was, like, the greys or the Pleiadians or, like, 
uh, the Andromedans, it's like I'm seeing all these different kind of beings like come and land on Antarctica and they were trying to decide like what kind of experiment they wanted Earth to be or they wanted to decide like how they would evolve Earth. So it's like this is before the dinosaurs were even around, but like this was um it's like they all met in present day Antarctica to decide um through the universe like how they would work together to evolve Earth. So if you were to um break away all that ice and snow there, would you find like an ancient city and pyramids and all of that, or what would you find? Yeah, so they're saying that there's, like, pyramids under the ice that are even bigger than the pyramids of ancient Egypt. And there's, like, um, <laughs> it's, like, oh, there's, like, a, a, like, a DNA bank of, like, all of the DNA of Earth that they used. And then there's also, like, um... It's like they left, it's like all of the missing pieces that we've been searching for. And that's why it's been so heavily like um, guarded is because they know that all of the secrets to the universe are in Antarctica. And there are so many portals in Antarctica that will take you wherever you want to go. Do galactic beings still use those portals to this day and utilize Antarctica? Yeah, so I'm seeing it's a lot more like the military is like using it as experience, like experiments to see where it will take them. And then it's also like um, the greys are like heavily invested in working with our military so i see like the grays like actively using these portals what advantage do the grays have to be utilizing earth militaries because they feel like they're probably more advanced than we are so there are a couple different types of grays so it's like i can see like so the little, the little grays kind of just like do what is best for them. <laughs> they have their own agenda and they're like, they're pretty feisty. <laughs> they're very like, um, they're a little manipulative. So it makes sense that they work with our military. Like they definitely just uh, look at situations like how will it benefit them as a species? And right now they're trying to figure out how, to genetically modify the human body um, to evolve the species of the greys. So um, it's like I can see they're working with the military to do this. Um, and it has to do with like military and weaponry and stuff. Um, what happened that they ended up not like that it froze over like what happened that it ended up not using that site anymore from the galactics yeah so it's not that like um they're showing me that it has just been so long that like what they're showing me was like millions of years ago so it's like um the earth has just evolved and shifted in its own orbit. And then that ice though, like it shifted at a point to where that ice has actually like perfectly reserved all of this knowledge for us. Now do the galactics and the militaries of the world have a treaty where the militaries know they can't access or allow humanity to access any of that area yeah and so I guess if you want to like I feel like Anta Antarctica is absolutely like the one example that we truly have that shows that politics and 
country borders and things like that are all made up um that they don't truly exist because if these different countries were really at war with each other then they would be fighting over antarctica but just the fact that they all have this peace treaty around the one of the most important places on this entire earth that just shows that there's more going on behind the scenes than we realize um, and there's only a few actual real people that are in charge of this, like, greater plan in place. Now, did the Anunnaki ever have access or to Antarctica? Yes, but they didn't use it as a portal as often because that the portals under Antarctica didn't take them exact like they didn't need to so the portals under Antarctica take you like out of the galaxy or um they're showing me there's like specific stars that are very far away so it's like this really allows you to travel intergalactically um and that's why the grays use it so much is because the grays are from so many different planets um but the anunnaki their home planet is pretty much in it's just like right outside of our solar system so for them it, they didn't need to access this particular portal got it got it um now, when the snow is melting and the um, the experience that we have, what kind of, can you give us an example of some of the ancient knowledge that we will be feeling awakened within ourselves? Or is it our Akashic that it awakens? Like, what does it awaken? Yeah, okay, so they're telling me that it's like the melting of the snow also has to do with us being galactic citizens. So it's like, we keep asking about like the technology that we need to go from one place to the other, but there are portals in Antarctica that are already there that we can use to go to all of these different places around the universe. So it's like, they're showing me like, um, and I have memories of like going through these portals under the Egyptian pyramids too. So it's like, you literally just like walk through these portals and you'll be like in Sirius or in the Pleiades or like you'll have access to certain stargates. So it's like the technology is already here. Um, it's just us having access to it. And right now it's just like still very heavily guarded. But um, they're saying like soon, like soon we will... Um, it's almost like disclosure has to happen twice. <laughs> so it's like, they're showing me like disclosure is going to happen where we're going to have actual contact with extraterrestrials. Um, and then it's almost like once we discover what is under Antarctica or like once we have proof of what is under Antarctica, it's almost like it's like the second awakening <laughs> to extraterrestrials and alien contact because not only will we be in contact with extraterrestrials, we'll be able to like travel to any place that we want to go. I keep a seeing like, uh, you there's like this guard, uh, in is it no, I think it's in the Thor movie where it's like a portal and he walks through it to go into different worlds. That's exactly what it's like. So it's like through that movie there it's like they're preparing us for these portals is it like a stargate like where what they show in that i think it's a series or something stargate where it's like a circle and you it kind of looks like a mirror huge circle and then you will just walk through it yeah that's like literally all it is it's like just like this for oh okay that's probably why i felt like i was in a vortex <laughs> It's because it's like literally just this vortex of energy that you walk through when you're in a completely different place. Now, when you walk through there, do you, what, like, what is it like, how does that, do they have to have a receiving portal? Is that my understanding on the other side? Like, 
they'll have to have their own kind of um, magic mirror. I guess I'm going to call it for myself. <laughs> Stargate. <laughs> like, do they have to have a receiving one for you to go to that planet? Yeah. So there still has to be, it's not even that it's like a Stargate. It's that there has to be like an energetic frequency that connects that portal. So like the portal can't take you everywhere you want to go, but it will take you to like specific planets where they have like set up the energetic connection between the portals. So, so okay, so the, I'm saying or I'm they're showing me that like the Pleiadians built this portal. So it's like directly, directly connected to the Pleiades. Um, because the Pleiadians were the first ones to like come to Earth and seed Earth. So it was like their portal why they came here to seed Earth. And then after that, it's just been like upgraded and used in different ways by different extraterrestrials. So if it, and if an a galactic being were to come to Antarctica now, does it affect, does the cold affect their physical bodies? There are some, um, it really just depends. Most planets, um, well, I mean, I've seen it both ways. So it really just depends on the being. So like, if they're more like light beings, then they don't really have an effect but then you do have beings like that really don't like the cold because i've noticed i mean i know we're a little off topic that a lot of light workers don't like extreme temperatures here like there are a lot of light workers that don't like it really hot and really cold <laughs> yeah and it just kind of depends on like the planets that you're from because every planet has a different atmosphere got it now, there's this agenda that's going on about global warming. And um, when you tell me about like the melting of the ice, it sounds to me like that actually is in the greater plan of unlocking that ancient knowledge. What can you tell us about global warming right now? And should we be concerned about it? What can we do? Or if it's a part of the contract of evolution, like what can you tell me? Yeah, so there's a difference between global warming or climate change versus air pollution. So absolutely, you should be aware of like the pollutants that you're putting into the air, but more because like you're physically breathing that in and it's having an it could have an effect like on your own body. But when it comes to global warming and climate change, the cycle just or the earth just has natural cycles that it's in. Um, and if you look throughout history, you'll see that like, and really do your own research, you'll see that earth has gone through these periods of great warming and great cooling. So um, everything is a cycle. So earth is just like coming back into its warming cycle or yeah, it's warming cycle. And it's all for a reason. So like all of this is planned for a reason for a higher and greater purpose so it's like we're meant to go into global warming at this time so that we can have access to ancient antarctica and so that we can have access to all of this like buried knowledge and it's all like divine timing because if we had been given access to this information of antarctica then we would not have been able to use it um, at a higher level of consciousness. So like it probably would have made people feel afraid or people would have used it as weaponry or people would have like used it against one another. And since we're evolving so quickly, when Antarctica does melt, we can use this information and use this technology for the highest and greatest good. Was it planned for there to be ice on Antarctica or was that something that um, was a destruction? So they're saying that like it wasn't always meant to be that way, but it was purposefully done after the last flood. So like after the last flood, because we tried to evolve this planet um, in a harmonious way with Atlantis and Lemuria um and then 
we just realized that like humans have to do it on their own so that they can evolve their own consciousness and integrate some things that needed to be integrated so it's like they're showing me that it was meant to be covered after Atlantis um, and I think that it even hid some of that ancient knowledge from the Anunnaki because like um, the Anunnaki were here and they They had very, like, detailed contracts with the Anunnaki, and I think they, like, also used the ice to hide this from the Anunnaki so that they didn't, like, fully understand the evolution of humans or, like, their full evolvement, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And I did find, I said in the past channeling that I've done, was Enoch was trapped there, um, in, in Antarctica almost to like hide that knowledge. Um, and we've, I've heard of there being, um, like draconian and reptilians in Antarctica. Are they, do they have bases there or are they even there at all? Yeah. So they're like heavily guarding it right now. So, um, they're afraid that the, cause they know that the ice is melting um so they can like already see it coming but yeah that's why it's so heavily guarded is because like they that that is like they definitely have control over those portals right now um so it's also like it's like directing traffic <laughs> mm -hmm. so they have control over like so before like the pleiades would use that portal syrians would use that portal um, but right now it's like heavily guarded by the reptilians and the greys working with them. I've heard of like oil rigger people who work on the, the ships that go to that area that they've come back and they've said what they saw, they could never talk about what kind of things would they see that they felt like they couldn't talk about? Um, like, what does it look like to them? Yeah, so they're just showing me, it's like, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of just like spacecrafts and stuff flying around you. <laughs> like, mm. it's like, I can just see them going in and out of these portals, because it's like the fastest way to access the portals that they need. Um, okay, and they're saying that like, they also made it so that it's a direct portal to Draco. So that makes more sense. So like that, uh, that's like the easiest and fastest like way for them to travel to and from their home planet. Got it. Got it. Are there, um, is there any other information regarding, well, actually, let me ask this um, to segue to our next video. I just wanted to ask, are there, are there inner earth? Um, can you access inner earth from the Antarctica? Is there a major tunnel from there to go there? Yeah, absolutely. So it's almost like they're showing me that like once Antarctica froze, a lot of beings that, because Antarctica was like this beautiful golden age. Um, it was like the first golden age on earth. And a lot of those beings that lived in Antarctica, um, they actually went into inner earth because there are parts of inner earth that are very, very beautiful. And it's like, once we reach this fifth dimensional consciousness, it's like the beings from inner earth will come to the surface as well. Mm, because they'll be able to access that. Uh, is there any other information regarding Antarctica you want to give us right now and help us understand? They just said that, um, like, instead of, or like to step back and change your perception of how you see things. So it's like, um, instead of being like, oh my gosh, what are they doing in Antarctica? Like, oh my gosh, there's reptilians down there. <laughs> um, 
just take a step back. Don't even put your attention on those things because your thoughts are extremely powerful. And instead, put your attention on like the beautiful things that are coming. So let's like when you do gain access to more of this ancient knowledge, it's like being in all of it. Like you like you're so happy and so grateful that you have access for to like all of this new information. So it's like changing your perceptive perception of like how you see everything is so important right now, especially as we um they're showing me like time is really speeding up. So it's really important that we learn how to back away and be the observer so that we can change our perception of everything because if we don't learn how to change our perception then the next few years of our life is going to be really really difficult yeah um I think that does play a huge thing and being an observer does that mean we can't have fun and joy in life yeah exactly so it's like how can you observe these situations be aware of them but then also not get stuck in like those thought loops so it's like more being aware of like the thought loops that they're causing and if it's triggering emotion inside of you so that you don't because when we like when we amplify our thought loops then it just keeps amplifying the emotions in our body and we just get stuck in this vicious cycle So it's just like when we say be the observer, it's just stepping back, honoring and loving your emotions and then changing your emotions or like not sitting in them for too long. So yes, it's like then go play, then have so much fun because you're here to experience. Love that. Love that. Well, thank you for the information of Antarctica.